Hi everyone and welcome back. It's Cheryl from Essence of Autumn Yarn and I hope that my voice sounds okay. I'm recording this late at night and I don't want to wake my husband up. He's sleeping. So I'm trying to talk a little bit lower, a little more softly so as not to disturb him. So hopefully the sound will be okay. So again, this is part two of dyeing bamboo yarn. And in this video, I'm going to be doing the speckled technique. So what I do first, like I did in part one with that yarn, I soak the yarn in a soda ash solution. That is the fixative or that is the agent that is going to make the dye adhere to the fiber. So again, this is plant-based fiber, so it uses soda ash as the fixative. I'm laying the yarn out flat on my table, and I'm going to apply the dye in this way. Usually when I do protein fibers, I like to do a low immersion water. So I put just a low amount of water into the pan that barely covers the yarn and then I apply the dry dye powder. I speckle it on top that way. I'm not doing that in this case. I've wrung the water out and so the water or sorry uh, the yarn is very damp. It's not sopping wet but it's quite damp so that the dye will stick to it. The reason why I'm applying the dye in this way is because plant-based fiber dyes behave differently than acid dyes. If I were to have this yarn submerged in water and I sprinkle the dye on top, the dye would just disperse, it would dilute, it would dissolve, and I wouldn't get the distinct speckles. So that's just the nature of the way that this dye is. So to get that speckled effect, I have to work differently with it than I would with protein yarns using acid dyes. So I can get the same or a similar look, but I do have to change the technique. In part one, if you actually, if you haven't checked out that video, I encourage you to do so. Um, 
I use a different method similar to the way that I dye protein fibers. So in that video, all the colors that I did, I had the yarn submerged in water. And because I wasn't going for a speckled effect, but I wanted to get solid stripes of color, it was okay for that dye to dissolve in the water. In fact, that was preferable because I really wanted to get nice, solid, even coverage. But with this, this is different. I want nice speckles. I want the colors to all stay separate and distinct. So I have to do it in this way to get that nice, distinct, speckled and spotted look. Now in the spray bottle, I have soda ash um, solution in that spray bottle. So just, as, just for good measure, after I applied the speckles, I sprayed it down with a bit more of that soda ash solution just to make sure that those speckles, that dry dye powder will stick, that the yarn is damp enough that those particles of dye will stick flip them over and then I repeat the colors on the other side. And because it's been soaking, it has been soaked in that soda ash, those speckles are adhered quite well. So it's okay for me to flip it immediately. I don't have to worry about the, about the dye um, smudging and not making that nice speckled color. And then I'm just putting it in these pans. Now, um, plant-based fiber dyes, these are actually, they're called fiber reactive procyon dyes. They take quite a lot of time to cure. So they don't need heat per se. So I don't have to put them in a heat source, but it should stay at a certain temperature. I think it's above 70 degrees. So they do need to be in a warm environment, but I don't actually have to heat it in an oven or in a stove. I can just leave them in a warm area, in a pan, covered.
So I mentioned that I don't need to heat the yarn when I'm using fiber reactive Procyon dies, but as you can see, I'm pulling the pans out of the oven. So I'm not contradicting myself. I didn't turn the oven on. I just stored the yarn in there for practical purposes. It saved space. I can put them on those shelves and stack them and I don't have all these pans sitting around um, so that I can use my table for other things. So uh, an important thing with the uh, using these types of dyes, the yarn does need to stay moist. So I covered the pans. I'm using these steel pans not because it's necessary, but because it's practical. I have a lot of them, so I just use what I have. But a plastic bin with a lid would have been just fine. And I let them cure for 48 hours and this is what they look like after 48 hours and now it's time to start the long and I mean long process of washing so I'm not going to explain what I'm doing here you can watch part one where I explain in detail how much work it takes to wash out fiber reactive dyes. Um, but I really sped up the process. I cut a lot of videos so that this would not be hours because it did take a few hours to wash all of this yarn. Once the yarn has been thoroughly washed, I finish it off with a few squirts of dye fixative. This fixative is only meant for uh, plant-based fibers, so don't use these when using acid dyes and protein yarn. And I like to use the fixative just because of the nature of these types of dyes they take a lot of work to take out that excess dye and so they do bleed a lot when washing them initially once that bleed or once that excess dye has been washed out then as you can see the yarn is nice and clear as you can see here that fixative is just helping to make sure that the last particles of dye that I, that I may not have been able to get out are fixed to the yarn and that's it. This is now color fast. Uh, it can be washed by hand of course and the color will stay vibrant and beautiful.
Well, what do you think? I think these colors turned out so amazing. I love this yarn so much. If I haven't mentioned it, this is my bamboo sock base and I even designed a pullover using some of the colors that I dyed. So feel free to check out that pattern. I'll leave the link in the information below. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the support that you give my channel. I love reading your comments. I get such beautiful feedback, encouragement, and it just makes me wanna make more videos for you, especially when you tell me how informative you find them. So I look forward to making more videos, and until next time, Bye.